Now that we have Visual Studio installed on our development machine, let's go ahead and let's create our very first ASP.NET Core project. Let's go to Visual Studio. And to create a new project, let's click on this button, create a new project. It will take us to the project template page. So here you can see a lot of templates for creating different types of projects. For example, creating a console application or a Blazor server application, ASP.NET Core Web API, class library, etc. So here we have a lot of different types of templates. Now we want to filter these templates based on the language as C Sharp and the project type as web. Okay, so now these templates which you are seeing here, they use C Sharp as the programming language and they are basically the web templates. Now here we want to create an ASP.NET Core application. For that we have two templates here, ASP.NET Core Web App and ASP.NET Core Empty. So we can choose any one of these two templates. If we choose this first template, this ASP.NET Core Web App, in that case it is going to create a project for us and in that project we are going to have some auto-generated files and folders. But if we choose ASP.NET Core Empty, in that case it is going to create an empty ASP.NET Core project. So for learning purposes, this is the one which I am going to choose here. Using this template, I can show you from scratch how ASP.NET Core web application works. Okay, so I am going to choose ASP.NET Core empty template here. Let's click on this next button. Now from here, we can specify the name for the project. I am going to call it maybe my first app. Then here, we can specify the location where we want to store this project. So here it has used the default location, but let's say I want to store this project in C drive and in there I want to have this ASP net co folder. So inside this ASP net co folder, I want to store all my ASP.NET co related projects. Then here we can also provide a solution name. So by default, the solution name is same as the project name. But if you want, you can also change your solution name, but I'm going to keep it as it is. Finally, we have this checkbox. Now, if you check this checkbox, in that case, what will happen is the project file, that means the .cs proj file and the solution file, they will be placed in the same directory. But if you don't check this, in that case, they will be placed in the separate directories. Solution file will be placed in the solution directory and the project file will be placed in the project directory. Okay, so I'm going to keep this unchecked. And now let's click on this next button. Now from here, we can select the .NET framework which we want to use. So if you remember during the installation, we installed .NET 6.0 and .NET 7.0. So here you can choose any one of them. I'm going to choose the latest one, which is .NET 7.0. And I don't want to configure HTTPS for now. As I said, I want to show you everything from scratch. So I want to keep things as simple as possible. So I'm going to uncheck this checkbox. And we also don't want to enable Docker. So I will keep this checkbox as unchecked. And now let's go ahead and let's click on this create button. So it is going to create an empty ASP.NET Core project for us. So as you can see, the project has been created. Let's close this overview tab. All right, so here my first app project has been created. This is an ASP.NET Core project. And if you see in this project, we have only one file, which is this program.cs file. Now, the very important point to keep in mind here is that ASP.NET Core Web Application is actually a console project, which starts executing from this program.cs file. Okay, so when we run this ASP.NET Core project, the first file which gets executed is this program.cs file. Let's go into this program.cs file. Now, in this program.cs file, we have only four lines of code. And if you notice, these codes are not present inside a class or a method. Basically, in a program.cs file, we have a program class. And inside that program class, we have a main method. And that main method is the entry point of any application. But here in this program.cs file, we don't have a program class and we don't have a main method as well. Basically, from C Sharp 9, what Microsoft has done is it has removed the program class and the main method. So whatever code you write here inside this program.cs file, 
It is similar to writing this code inside the static void main method of the program class. Okay, so you can think of this code as the content of the static void main method of the program class. So whenever the ASP.NET Core project will run, first it is going to execute these four lines of code. Now let's try to understand what these four lines of code are doing. So the first line of code here, it is going to create an instance of web application builder. So here we have this web application static class and on that static class, we are calling this create builder method. And to that create builder method, we can pass some arguments. Now, when we call this create builder method, it is going to return us an instance of web application builder. So let me put that comment here. Now, what does this web application builder do? Well, the web application builder pre-configures some defaults like configuration, environment, services, etc. on the web application. Now, if this does not make any sense right now, then don't worry. We are going to talk about it in great detail in the future lectures of this course. In this very first lecture, let's try to keep things simple. Just understand that this first line of code creates an instance of web application builder. Now on that web application builder, so basically we are storing that instance of web application builder inside this builder reference variable. So on that instance, when we are calling this build method, it is going to return us an instance of web application. Okay, so at this line, we are going to receive an instance of web application. And it is this web application, which is your ASP.NET Co web application. Okay, so here, this app is going to store your ASP.NET Co web application. Again, I want to keep things simple here, so I don't want to go into details, but just keep in mind that this app is your ASP.NET Co web application. Now, in the next line, we are creating a route on that web application. Okay, so here we are creating a single route. Now, what this line of code will do? Here, we are basically creating a route for HTTP GET method and the URL here is the root URL. So, this slash means root URL. That means, whenever a user will make a GET request to the root URL, this callback function will be executed. And when this callback function will be executed, this callback function is going to return this string in the response. Again, if you don't know what a route is, don't worry. We are going to talk about routes in great detail in the future lectures. For now, just understand that a route is basically a URL. And this route consists of HTTP method plus the URL. Okay, so a route consists of HTTP method and the URL. Here, URL is the root URL. So this slash means root URL. Root URL is basically your domain name. Now, when you are working in development, there the root URL is your localhost colon the port number on which your application is running. Okay. And HTTP method is basically get, post, put, delete, etc. And we are going to talk about these HTTP methods again in the future lectures. So here basically what we are trying to say is whenever a user makes a get request to the root URL in the response, send him this string. Okay. Basically, whenever a get request will be made to this URL, this callback function will be executed. This callback function will be called. And when this callback function will be called, it is going to return this string in the response. And finally, at this line, we are starting the server. Okay. So first, we are creating an instance of web application builder. Using that web application builder, we are creating an instance of web application. And that web application is our ASP.NET Co web application. On that web application, we are creating a route. Here, we are creating a single route. And then we are running the server. So basically, we are running that app on the server. So if I go ahead and if I run this program, here you can see the browser has opened. So basically, our application is running at localhost and port number 5136. So this is our root URL. Okay, and when we have made a get request to this root URL, in the response, we have received this string, hello world. Okay, so localhost colon this port number is the root URL in our case. 
and we are specifying that root URL in the code using this single slash. Okay, so whenever a user makes a GET request to this slash, we are sending this string in the response hello world. But instead of sending this string in the response, let's send some other string. So here let's say this is my first ASP.NET Core app. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go to the browser and let's refresh the page. So when I refresh the page, I'm still seeing the same response. So the response is not updating here. For that, what I need to do is first I need to stop this application and then run it again. Or what we can also do is we can use this option called hot reload. So let me click on this. Okay, so here you can see down it is saying applying changes. Now if I go back to browser and if I refresh the page, now you can see that we have that string in the response which we have just specified. So it is this string which we are now sending in the response. All right. And you will also notice that in the background, this console application is running. And keep in mind that as long as this console application is running in the background, your server is up and running. As soon as you close this console application, your server will also shut down. Okay. So here in the browser, I am getting this response from the server, basically from our ASP.NET Co app, because this server is still running. If I go ahead and if I close this, that means we have shut down the server. You will notice that the application has also stopped. And now if I go ahead, if I open the browser and there, if I type that URL, if I press enter, you see, we are not receiving any response. It says the site can't be reached. That's because we have closed the server. Now, to again restart the server, we can again run this application. So when we run this application in the background, this console application will start. And as long as this console application will run, the server will be up and running. Okay. Now here, this server is starting because of this line of code, this app.run. If I go ahead and if I comment this line of code, we learned that using this run method, we are actually starting the server, right? So if I go ahead and if I comment this code, let me first stop this application and let me comment this code. Okay. And now if I try to run this application, you see, it is not starting. That's because it is not able to start the server. So if I open that console app, you see here also we have that message exited with code zero. So as I have mentioned before, the ASP.NET Co web application which we create, that is actually a console application. So it is that console. Okay. When we run this program file, it is going to open this console application. Now, when we uncomment this code, it is going to start the server and we will see that log message in this console. Okay. So let me close this console here and now let me start the application again. So here we can see the response in the browser. If we go to that console application here, we can see some log information. So for example, we are listening on this localhost colon 5136 port number. Then the hosting environment is development environment. And also the root path is this path. Okay. So it is this console application, which starts when this program.cs file gets executed. Let's stop the application here. Okay. So keep in mind that ASP.NET Co application is basically a console application. When that console application starts, internally it starts a server and on that server, it hosts our ASP.NET Co web application. And this app is our ASP.NET Co web application. So basically this app gets hosted on that server when we use app.run. So this app.run starts the server and on that server, it hosts that web application. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any other questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.